and thanks for joining us right here on Plush Work. And today we've got the one and the only Miss Frida Payne. Frida Payne is an American singer and actress. Frida is best known for her career in music, film, and stage, and her huge hit, Band of Gold. Frida is the older sister of Cherie Payne, a former singer with the Supremes. Help me welcome the legendary and beautiful Miss Frida Payne. Frida Payne, how are you? I'm fine. I'm doing fine. Like, I think I mentioned to you that uh, last week I had knee replacement surgery. So uh, other than that, I'm good. I'm well, you good. look I'm wonderful. Uh -huh. <laughs> you look wonderful. How have you been holding up during the pandemic and this, all the stuff that's well, going on? Well, you know what? I took it serious and I did yeah. stay in a lot, you know. The only time I went went out was to go to the supermarket uh -huh. or go to Costco. And then there's uh like I go to a therapy class, you know, for my you know, to work to have work out for my health. Uh -huh. And uh that's about it. So I mean I didn't do any socializing yeah. uh or anything like that. I just stayed in the house and basically and uh, watched a lot of TV, lot of TV. And, and movies and and reading, you know, uh -huh. and and so I just, you know, I'm I'm, I'm blessed to to have a lovely home. Mm -hmm. I'm not in an apartment, you know. I don't have to mm -hmm. worry about the rent, but I do have to worry about the mortgage payment, you know. Right, I mean? right, right, right. And, and the water and the power and the gas and right and there's you know every all the other little things that you know insurance payments. Like everybody, like a lot of people. Like everybody else. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I'm comfortable though right now. I'm pretty right. comfortable. Mm -hmm. I saw in another interview, because you know, I always go and do my research and look at stuff. And in another interview, your sister Cherie called in. And I think she just called in a few moments ago. You guys must be very close. We are. We are close. We are. We've always been close. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, she lives out here too. She's She's like about a 15 minute drive away uh -huh. from me. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Who sang, who, who sang first? Was it you or Sheree? It was Sherry. It was Sherry, Sherry. Was it? Sherry. When we were kids, when we were kids, you see, when I was a kid up until I guess um, I was 12 or 13, I was extremely shy. I was painfully shy. Wow. And Sherry was the opposite. Mm -hmm. Sherry was the one that, you know, the little kid that, oh, can I sing for you? You know, like when the, when the relatives would come over and my right, mother's right, friends, right. she'd like, you know, go and put on her little, like my mama's dress or something uh -huh. like that and come uh -huh. out and say, I want to, I want to perform, you know, and, wow. and I would, I was the opposite. I was like, they'd look for me and I'd say, uh-uh, no, I'm gone. I'd be hiding somewhere. Wow. So it all it all it all turned around. It changed for me by the time I turned twelve and thirteen. Wow. wow. Um, what was it like growing up? Because you're from Detroit. My family yeah. is actually from Detroit. Uh, they moved to uh, Alabama in I think the 50, 1950s. Um, and so, what was it like growing up in Detroit? Uh, this just Detroit back in the day, because I used to see all these pictures of my grandmother and she'd be all dressed up and they'd be sitting at these tables, you know, with, 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 with people and it just looked like such a grand life, you know, uh, back then with, with Motown and everything. Yeah. What was it like? Well, I have to tell you, when you said you, uh, you, you, Detroit and then they went back to, you said then they, your grandmother went back to Alabama? Yes, yeah, she went, she moved, they moved in, I think the, the, the mid fifties. Well, my mother was born in Alabama. Wow. And at the age of three, uh, her mother, who was my grandmother, my paternal uh -huh. grandmother, they, they came up to Detroit. Uh -huh. And that's what happened. It was the opposite. So they were from Alabama, but like my mother was, uh, they, they migrated up to Detroit and uh, my mother stayed there for the rest of her life. Wow. Detroit. Yeah, wow. and also my uncles and 
other aunts and uncles the same thing. They came from they were they were Alabamians. Wow. And then they came, they migrated up to Detroit. They because that's where the work was. I'm going back to the wow. 40s now. Wow. The 40s and the 50s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. When did you realize? So Sheree, Sh- Sheree is her name, right? Sheree. And Sherry. I, Sherry. Sherry. Yeah. Like the wine, Sherry. Oh, yeah, Sherry so wine. Yeah. So Sherry sang first. When did you realize you had something to offer that it was? in you to entertain us? I was, well, it was, our, we, we uh, my sister and I took piano lessons. Uh-huh. And, and we started taking, I, I was like about six years old when I started taking piano lessons. And then Sherry started after that. Sherry's two years my junior. Mm-hmm. And I, this was, I was 12 and my uh, p- piano teacher was getting uh, all her students ready for the next piano recital, which was uh-huh. an annual thing. And so she said, she looked at me and she said, Frida, you know what? I, I want to put together an ensemble of six singers. And there's a song I want to do. It's called Spring is Bus- Bursting Out All Over. And I want to test your voice mm-hmm. to see if you're good enough to be in the group. Wow. So she starts playing something and I and wanted me to sing. And I did. She says, Frida, you have a lovely voice. And I said, mm-hmm. really? You know, because I wasn't aware of I have, I'm having it. You weren't even aware of it. No. Oh. And she said, she says, I want you to do a solo. Mm-hmm. So she gave me a song to do as a solo. And at the recital, after it was over, all my mother's friends, they were like, they were like all excited. Like, oh, we didn't know that Frida could sing because they all they knew was about Sherry. Mm-hmm. And so I start I start being invited to different events to sing, you know, like like banquets, teas, and stuff like that. Wow! And then when I was thirteen, I started to enter talent contests in and around Detroit. And I entered a talent con. I went to audition for a talent contest w- that was uh, on TV, and it was called Ed McKenzie's Dance Hour. Uh huh. Ed McKenzie was like Detroit's. Dick Clark, American Bandstand. Uh-huh. And so it came on every Saturday afternoon and it featured a soup, let's say a star performer who was performing at one of Detroit's local clubs. Like you'd have like the Flame Show Bar and then you'd have like the Elmwood Casino that was over in Windsor right across the river. And then you'd have the Rooster Tail. Mm-hmm. And there were other clubs. Detroit had a, a few, quite a few clubs. So I, um, uh, I, I won. I got. I got to to perform on the talent show, uh-huh. and they also featured. It wasn't just that. They also featured dancing, just like American Bandstein. They had these little young teenage couples, all these little white couples dancing, mm-hmm. and uh, the talent show consisted of just four acts. So oh. so, and then of course they had, a, like you say, a headliner whoever is appearing in Detroit. And that time it was Sammy Davis Jr. who -hmm. was the headliner. Well, I won the talent, the talent contest. Isn't that something? Wow. I won it. And six months later, they called me back to participate, to do it again. I guess they were wondering if I, if, if that was a fluke or whatever, but anyway, I won the second time. Uh And uh, from that point on, people start hearing about me and, and they would uh, actually book me. Like for instance, I sang, I, I was asked to sing with a band in Detroit. It was the Jimmy Wilkins band orchestra, mm-hmm. uh-huh. Jimmy Wilkins. And uh, Jimmy Wilkins was like Detroit's version of Count Basie. Mm-hmm. And I would sing with his band. And um, one thing, just one thing led to another. And then when I was 16, I got to uh, audition for the Ted Mack Amateur Hour. Mm-hmm. Now, back then, in those days, we're talking about in the 50s, Ted Mack was like, let's say, today's uh, American Idol or yeah. uh, The Voice, you know, was uh-huh. the national show. And it emanated from New York. So they flew me and my mother to New York. And uh, I was on the show as a uh, participant. And I won second place. I won second place. 
But and then about two weeks later, I'm looking. I'm somebody said, "Girl, you're in jail." And I said, "What?" I couldn't believe it. Mm. It was like, "What?" I haven't done anything to be in jail. And they they it was a write up. It was like about a three page write up about me being on on Ted Mac Amateur Hour because back then Jet would mm. report any any African American. Uh, artist, whatever, if they were doing something on TV or in the movies, they would write about it, you know, because mm -hmm. that was, that was it. They, I remember, I have to say this, uh, a friend of mine, Quincy Jones, back wow. then, I knew him in the 60s. I knew uh -huh. Quincy, I met Quincy when I was 18, and he used to refer to the, to Jet Magazine as the Black Dispatch. <laughs> he said, I said, why you call it that? He said, because that's the only way we're going to know what black folks are doing. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Look, look it's at amazing. What, it's amazing. It's amazing. Look, look at how we've grown. Wow. I know. Look how we've yeah. grown. We've yeah. come, like they say, we've come a long we've way. Come a long way. As, as they but, say, too, look at God. <laughs> look yeah. what God can do. Listen but you know you. what? They say yeah. we, we have come a long way. We have. We have. Oh, my God. Yeah. 50, 40 years ago, if you had mentioned... Uh, Oprah, like if somebody told me there would be an Oprah Winfrey, yeah, and and her becoming uh, uh, a first female, you know, woman a billionaire, a president that we would have in my life, and the black, black president. Yeah. I mean, I would have thought you were crazy, out of your yeah. mind, yeah. you know, because it was just like it, that's the way it was. Yeah, that's the way it was. Now it's a whole different thing because. The world is metamorphosis. It's it's a uh, it's recreating itself. Yeah. Uh, humanity is 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 yelling out for change, and yeah. something miraculous is happening. Don't you? When think I saw what? those protesters and those yeah. rioters, yeah. Yeah. and I saw those, and they're young people. You didn't see. I didn't see any fifty and sixty or seventy year olds out there. I saw These all people people young. Yeah. Yeah. I said because they. First of all, they're better informed. They have done their homework. They know what's going on and they see what's happening. And yes. they're saying, hell no, I'm not going to take it no more. No more. Yes. And, and the injustices, the yes. killing of, of black men yes. for, little or no, for little or no reason no, at all, no. other than the fact that uh, uh, a higher authority, a policeman has the gun and the baton and the taser, and they can and they can do it. They have a license to kill. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's a sad thing, and it's a sad world, which brings us to this event that you guys are doing for um, on Friday, which is so, you know, it's it's so important even in today with what's going on, you mm -hmm. know, a lot that's going on in the world. With, with black men being killed, mm -hmm. black women being killed, and even in the trans world, trans people are being killed and right. homeless. So the event that you guys are putting on, um, why are you so passionate even about? Because first of all, I've grown up being aware of people who, you know, boys, girls but mostly mostly boys mm -hmm. that were like a little feminine mm -hmm. feminine and and they were artistic i remember being in ballet classes mm -hmm. and in modern dance classes and i remember mm -hmm. uh i had some friends that they were they they were into that and i right. i knew they were kind of girly girly or whatever mm -hmm. and but i just took it as like they were my friends right you know and of course my mother like when i was like 15 16 years old uh, if I wanted to go to the show or go somewhere, and and she said, well, who who invited you? And I'd say, well, I would mention a name, so and so. She says, okay, you can go, and it would be somebody that was like on the feminine side, you uh, know what I mean? Right, right. And because she knew nothing was going to happen. Happen, right? You know. And back yeah. then, my mother was scared because I developed early. I was 12 years old, and I I wore a size 34 C bra. Uh huh. I was fully mm -hmm. developed in the size. Mm -hmm. And yeah, really, I developed early. Mm -hmm. And so my mother was scared to death that mm -hmm. even though she had given, given me the talk, right. you know, the talk yeah. about the birds and the bees, she was still scared to death that I would come up pregnant. 
you right. know, when I, oh, like that's at the age of 14 or 13 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you so have- those things happen. Right. Now you have a daughter as well, correct? No, I don't. I have a son. Oh, no. I have a son, Gregory okay. Abbott Jr. Gregory Abbott Jr. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. now, is he a singer? Or does he sing? No, he doesn't sing at all. He's not interested in that. He wants, he says, Mom, I want to be uh, uh, behind the camera. I don't want to be in front of the camera. Okay. His dad, now, you know, his dad turned out to be a, uh, a, a, a singer and, and had a huge hit record back absolutely. in the 80s. I remember Gregory Abbott. Shake You Down. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember that song, clearly. Um, so, with this event that's going on on Friday and everything that's going on in that community, with that world, and what you're doing, um, there's so there's even racism. I was talking with the host. Uh, there's a lot of racism even in that community, which I was pretty much shocked because you're talking about two minorities, <laughs> right? You know, and which I couldn't quite understand. How is it that one minority could be against another minority? You know, I was, I, I remember have, uh, having picked up on a conversation mm -hmm. with, um, with African-American uh, gay men and they'd say, oh no, honey, you know, you're the, some of the white, even though you'd say, well, this white guy or this uh, Asian guy, uh, they, they should be on the same, on the same page. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's not, mm -hmm. it's still the race thing. Still the race thing, yeah. Mm -hmm, wow. mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, let's move to one of my, the key reason uh, that we hear also is that incredible song that you put out, Band of Gold. Yeah. How did, how did that wonderful song come about? Well, I had, you know, I was signed, I was signed with a label called Invictus. Uh huh. And uh, in Invictus, that was Holland Dozier and Holland. Holland. They were the Motown, yeah. the Motown guys. Yes. And so they were used to having hits and they had signed me and I was like one of the main performers that uh -huh. they had signed. It was me, chairman of the board, uh, the honeycomb, they signed them. Yes. And, yes. and there were other people. Um, so they, they were looking for a song. This was my, this would, would have been my first hit. And they were looking for a song to put out on me. They recorded many songs. Uh, and then the first single they put out was called The Unhooked Generation. Mm -hmm. And I recorded, and they put that out. And, and I always liked that one, too, because the track was jamming. Mm -hmm. And then they put, but it didn't, didn't quite, you know, do what they wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. So then a few months later, they put out Band of Gold. Mm -hmm. it, was a night, it was February of 1970. And Band of Gold was the one that, like, zoom! You know. Wow. When you recorded that song, did you have an inkling or a feeling that it was going to be a hit? No. Really? Because you know what? I, I felt that everything I recorded, because I recorded, uh, they had me doing a lot of songs, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I felt that everything was good. I okay. thought that Un Unhooked Generation was going to be a hit. Uh huh. I guess they thought it too. <laughs> you oh. know? Wow. You know? Hello. Hey, or oh, uh, okay, I'm, I'm back. It, yeah, I'm it blacked back. out for a minute, but that's okay. We'll edit. We'll edit all that out. Well, okay. Well, um, when you um, before we close, when you look back on your career and all the wonderful things that you've done in music, in film, and on oh, stage, no. and just everything, when you look back, because you've had an incredible career. What, yeah. What are you most proud of? Oh my God. Well, I'm proud of getting two gold records with Invictus. I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of do it, playing the role of, uh, um, this is my acting side. I'm into yes. theater as well. Yes. I, I'm proud of having uh, played the role of Miss Ella Fitzgerald mm. in a play called Ella Fitzgerald, First Lady of Song. Yes. And uh, I was able to do that play at least... Um, it was like three, three or four different times. Mm -hmm. Once in in um, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and mm -hmm. then Alex, Alex, Alexandria, Virginia, mm -hmm. at the Metro Stage Theater, 
Yeah, and, that's right uh, down the yeah. street from where I am now. Really? Because yeah, I'm there was the Metro I'm stage. Arlington. I was. Wow. When did you? Yeah, when, I did. A, it was like an eight-week run. I was uh, there for eight weeks, and believe me, it was everybody came to see me. When was um, Rita, When was this? This was uh, 2014. Oh, I okay. 2014. Well, I, I, I missed that. Mm. Yeah. Deborah Lee came from BT. She came out to see me with her friend Linda Green. And uh, Dick Gregory came to see me because uh -huh. he's a fan. He always comes when I'm in that area, he'll come to uh -huh. see my shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, Julian Bond. It was like, uh -huh. it was so nice. And I, I think we, I think we, we, they said that I did the best business of mm -hmm. that eight week run. They said wow. I did the best business. And then the last time I did it was in 2018. Uh -huh. And that was um, in Wilmington, Delaware, at the Delaware Theater. Wow. And I did it there. And I had, oh, and I got a Ray review in the Washington Post. Wow. That's amazing. I guess it's kind of hard for you to imagine me doing that, you know, wow. but. Uh, I've seen some of the reviews and some of the interviews as well. Um, mm -hmm. I guess you can hear my dog barking. I, I can't sure can. I can't, but he's fine. He's fine. Yeah. Um, I I um I I got some of the um I I saw some of the interviews uh, on that and some of the um the writings on that as well. What mm -hmm. do you um you also uh, um you had a wonderful album that you put out a few years ago. Uh huh. Um, on Mac Avenue, that one. That, Come back yes. to love. Yes, yes. Well, you yes. know what? I've got some material. This hasn't been released. It's it's in the can right now. I recorded last year at Capitol Records with the big band and strings. I did four duets. I've done five things. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the duets was with Johnny Mathis. Mm -hmm. And then there was Kenny Lattimore, Dee Dee mm -hmm. Bridgewater, mm -hmm. and Kurt Elling. Wow. And so we're going to add some, we're going to throw some more songs into this. So, you know, so I have at least about nine or 10 songs. Okay. Well, that's a, new al a new album? Yeah, that's a new, a new that's one. That's a new yeah. album. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. We can't wait to hear it. Have you already titled it yet? No, I haven't titled it yet. Okay. I don't know. Let's title it. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I'm I still here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I like, oh, I love that. I'm still here. I'm still here. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? You are. I think that's why it was such an incredible feeling of being overwhelmed to interview you. And when I pick you, um, you're an icon. Like I remember growing up, there was there was you, Diana Ross, there was the Supremes. There were so many beautiful women, you know, mm -hmm. back there, representing beauty and elegance and yeah. style and poise. And you guys did it so well. Um, and, and, and that's why I'm here to celebrate, celebrate you and your legacy. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate that. Absolutely. So I want to thank you so, 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 so much for this interview. Well, you're welcome. I just, I just want to continue to do it, make people happy. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. thank you again. Is there anything else you want to add to this interview before we leave? Well, I just, I'm just glad to be here and, and to speak with you. And oh, I, I did tell, talk about that. And of course I want to continue to perform and, Absolutely. and maybe one, maybe one day I might do a movie about Ella Fitzgerald. Who knows? That would be incredible. That would be yeah. incredible. Well, yeah. I want to say thanks to Jason for, um, for allowing this interview to take place and, and also putting this event on because if he, and put these in oh, there. Jason's been, he's been incredible. Yes, yes, he's awesome. Yeah, I've known him a long time. He's, he's something. Absolutely. Well, thank Quite. you again so much for this interview tonight. You take care, be, be okay. safe, and be careful. And I can't wait to see you perform or just see yeah. you or talk to you again. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Okay, you All too. Right, everybody, thanks for joining us right here with the one and only legendary Frida Payne. You all have a good night. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Frida. You're welcome. All right. Have a good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Right, <laughs>